Hi, my name's Keith Cooper, North Flight Images, and in this video I'm going to have a quick look at using the straight through paper feed path. It's actually for board and thick card uh, for this Epson ET8500. Now it's very similar to the Epson ET8550 and I've got a video that looks at that. Uh, the mechanism at the back is slightly different, so although the ET8500 and ET8550 are identical from a profiling point of view, uh, the larger 8550 has a slightly different mechanism at the back, so you might want to have a look at that one instead. Um, I'm going to be printing a card on pre-creased card. This particular one is a photo speed one that I've, I've looked at before. I've got a profile for it and I'm not using poster board on this because I don't have any A4 poster board. Um, I have A3 plus and A2 sheets of poster board and I'm not cutting up a sheet of poster board of Epson uh, board just to try on this for something I'm never going to use. Um, the principles are exactly the same uh, just to take a little bit more care in setting the thickness when you're adjusting the back here but I'll show how you do that. But there are a few issues with using the straight through print path. Now, here's the image. It's uh, this one here. It's uh, a, an original artwork I scanned when I did the 8550 uh, review. You could do exactly the same with this. This has a obviously a smaller scanner than the 8550. And here's the image after I've worked on it, um, ready to print. There is a slight problem with this one though, in that when you put a uh, card through from the back, you end up with a very large margin at one end and it's well over an inch, probably two to two, two and a half centimeters or so uh, margin, which means that if you were hoping for borderless printing, you're out of luck. If you want to print on card like this borderless, use this top slot here. It goes through, it's not a straight through path, but if you need to print on card, you're either going to have to use a longer piece of card with a custom page size so that you can chop it afterwards or you're just going to accept that you're going to lose information on here, print information here. And if I was to print this, this is the leading edge as it comes out of the, um, out of the printer, which would mean I would lose a nice chunk of the card here, uh, of the image itself. So what I'm going to do, I'm, I've opened this in Photoshop, but you can do it whatever uh, you might use. Now I'm just going to turn this image, I'm going to rotate it by 180 degrees so that it comes out of the printer the right way. Now I've got it there. You could print this from Epson Print Layout just fine. I'm using Photoshop just because it's convenient here. This is, by the way, quite an old version. This is Photoshop CS6. You do not need the latest Photoshop to do most things with Photoshop. Yeah, there's some nice whistles and bells and stuff like that. But if you've got an old version of Photoshop, um, know, knowing how to use an old version of Photoshop very well beats having a new version of Photoshop that you don't know how to use very well. Uh, the fundamentals have not changed, but that's, a, that's, a, that's another video. Here we go, and I'm going to set up this and I'm going to print. Now, the 8550 I've got, the 8500 I've got set up as a printer on this Mac here, and here's the print layout. Now, as it stands, um, I'm using the Velvet Fine Art, the VFA setting. That's the best setting for printing matte materials like this because it uses the black, all the both black inks and the colors as well. So you get the best performance from it. Certainly for printing cards, the VFA setting beats the card settings or the matte settings. They don't use the inks. You will need to experiment a bit, but I've got loads of stuff on the 8550 and 8500 about that. And um, if you can't find information, if you've got an A500 and you can't find the information, have a look at my 8550 information because the two really are that similar. So we've got that. I've got Photoshop Manager's Colors. I'm using my profile. Um, these profiles are you know, the ones I did for the 8550. I've got a few extras which I'll include when I do the full written review for this one. But given how similar the printers are, um, you can learn almost everything you need to know about one of these just by looking at my setup video for this and also the 8550 stuff. But anyway, there's the there's that. I'm printing normal perceptual rendering intent, but I need to go to the print settings because at the moment it shows you know a slight border on that, and that's fine. And it's set for it's a preset that I've got and it's set for VFA mode for the you know for the paper type uh, for the media type. 
and it's set to A4. Now, if I look at the details of this, I can see that A4 has several options. It has A4, but it has A4 borderless, which I could print if I want here, but that only works at the top here. And it's got A4 rear feed slot. Now, when I do that, I'll set that and save. So I've set the rear feed slot. And this changes to show the huge grip margin on it. I need to change the centering of this. I've got the image centered. I need to shunt the picture off. Now, it does mean that I'm going to lose, and this is one I prepared earlier, there should be um, some writing on the back here. But this is the trailing edge, so we've got no writing on this. So another thing you might need to consider. But that's one there. So I can change this by, I just change the amount of left mount movement. I can shunt the picture across. There we go, we've moved that, we've centered that back again. So we've just lost a chunk of the edge here. Now that's, yeah, that's annoying, but yeah, this is just for a demo for to show you this. So I'm going to print with that, but I'm going to have to set this up first um, to actually use the rear feed. Now, one of the things I have to do with this is open up the back. So I'll shift this round here. Uh, you start off, you need to lift the paper feed that you'd normally use for this rear tray and you get access to the duplexer unit. Now the duplexer unit is what if you're using plain paper and this you want to print double sided, it swaps, runs the paper, switches it over so it can print double sided. You can't do double sided for sort of fine art stuff through the top here or through the back. But we take this off and I just push in two little levers here and it goes in. And the thing we want is this attachment here. Now this clips in and it just lifts off like that. We don't need this for the printing, so put that aside. This bit here needs fitting inside here. Now there's a ridge, uh, what, an extension at the front here. That goes further in. So I push that as far as it'll go like that. And then drop that down. And we've now got the rear tray or rear feed set up. Uh, these little blue tabs on it, they hold the paper in place or the card. Uh, you, they also give you an idea of how thick you can go. You, if you want to put something like Epson poster board, which is 1.6 millimeters thick, that is within the specs of this, but it does run a bit tight through these little tiny blue tabs here. So you might want to change that. But anyway, I've got that set. I'm going to print from this and we we'll wait for the, it's my old MacBook Pro from quite a few years ago, so it's not exactly quick. Uh, the image is larger than the paper's printable area, some clip, yes, we know it's gonna clip because we've got the border problem at one end. And so I will just tell that to proceed. Now, at this point, you do not load the paper or the card. You have to wait until the printer actually asks you to do it. Now I'm looking for the display here for it to wake up and it will ask me to insert the paper and do it. Now I'll leave it this way around so you can see I've got a second camera as you've seen that actually that's looking just at this bit here. So I'll show the feed process on this. So I'm waiting to see what's happening up here. Now I've rotated this round so I can actually see the screen here of what's happening. It says preparing to print, do not load paper, remove the rear cover, and load that. So we're okay with that. How to close. So I've gone through the instructions here and it tells me eventually I have to load a sheet of paper. Now I'll rotate this back around again so we can see. You need to set these little guides for the size of the paper. There we go. A little bit fiddly. And there we go, we've got the paper. I'm going to load that in. And at a certain point, it should, rec ah, there we go. 
it. There's slight resistance and it just draws the paper in and hopefully it will now start printing. Pulls it back out again. We had a paper feed error, so take that out. And at last, it's printing. Um, I'll leave quite a bit of this in the video so that you can see what happens and that it doesn't always work as easily as you might hope. There is the print. It's done. So I have my print. Um, yeah, we haven't got the writing at the back here, but it's printed OK. Uh, what does this tell me about setting it up? Well, first of all, you need clear access to the front and the back. Um, it does work. I mean, I know it works. because I've done it on the 8550. Um, it's a little bit sort of turkey just feeding stuff in. Um, if it's useful to you, it's useful to you. Um, I'm just glad that all I normally have to do is just load this piece of paper into here and away we go. I'd set the type media type here, the size and the and I'd print that way. So yes, you can print at the back. You lose a hefty margin, um, but yeah, it does work eventually. I hope that's been of use. Uh, if you've got any questions, let me know because I've got this printer here for a little while yet and I can do a few more of these videos on it. But it just goes to show that um, once you start sort of doing stuff at the back here and doing things, it's it just gets a little bit more difficult. Of course, the thing I have to remember as well after having done that, if I'm not going to do any more, is that I have to take this out and you just lift it up like that. Take it out. It fits on the unit you know, here, some little arrows, it clicks into place. And then we can just put that back and there we go. So um, thanks for watching and um, I hope it's of use to someone out there. Thank you.